This is a quick video about amphotericin B and how you can easily remember it for the exam and recall it and use it when you need to. Now amphotericin B is a very important antifungal that is available to us. How does amphotericin B really work? What it does is it makes holes in the walls of a fungus which allows um, leakage of the electrolytes from the fungus and as a result killing them. So it's going to make a hole here which is going to allow electrolytes to leak out. Now this is one mechanism of uh, killing a fungus. I would like to take this opportunity to talk about some of the other mechanisms that are also available to us in order to kill fungus. Now, Inside the fungus, squalene is, uh, uh, is converted to linosterol through the enzyme squalene epoxidase. Okay? And linosterol is again converted to ergosterol through P450 meta metabolism. Now, both squalene epoxidase and P450 can be inhibited by drugs. Drugs that inhibit uh, squalene epoxidase is called terbinafine. Okay, so it's going to be terbinafine. And drug that inhibit the P450, the P450 inhibitor that inhibits the conversion of linosterol to ergosterol is going to be the azoles, ketoconazoles, fluconazoles, all those azoles. So these two drugs is going to inhibit um, protein synthesis inside the fungus. But this is not the only mechanism of affecting um, the fungal cells or to kill fungal cells. There are other mechanisms as well. Now, there are microtubules present inside the fungus and these microtubules can be inhibited by a drug called griseofulvin. And there is also pyrimidine that needs to be synthesized inside a fungal cell. And that is going to be inhibited by a drug called flu cytosine. So these are some of the common mechanisms of uh, antifungals. So now let's get, get back to our amphotericin B. So you can see, compared to the other antifungals, amphotericin B really works at the level of cell wall, which is quite obvious. The others was just an overview of what I'm going to be talking about in the future. Now, what about clinical use of amphotericin B? When do we really use amphotericin B? Amphotericin B is uh, commonly used for systemic mycosis. And what are some of the common um, systemic mycosis that is that it's used in? Okay, um, they are A for aspergillus. Okay, B for blastomyces. C for coxoides. The other C for candida. Okay. And there is another C which I added that it cannot, cannot cross blood brain barrier. Okay. Amphotericin B cannot cross blood brain barrier. Which antifungal can cross blood brain barrier? I'll give you a hint. It's uh, azole. Did you think about it? It's actually fluconazole. And that's why fluconazole is used for cryptococcal infections, um, cryptococcal meningitis in AIDS because it can cross blood brain barrier and it can cure the meningitis that is in, in, in the brain. Now, there are more uh, systemic mycosis uh, other than the ABCCC that I mentioned. There is also H for histoplasma. and M for mucor. Okay, so, but in general, amphotericin B is used for um, systemic mycosis. So you can remember it kind of A, B, C, 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 C for coxoides, candida cannot cross blood-brain barrier, H for histoplasma, and M for mucor. Now my next question to you is, we now know that amphotericin B cannot cross blood-brain barrier. So should we be using it for any kind of meningitis? Funny thing is, we do use it for um, meningitis, but how can we use it for meningitis when it cannot cross blood brain barrier? Well, we use it intrathickly, okay? 
as a result it can go to the brain and cure our meningitis so those are one of the most common clinical use of amphotericin B now let's talk about the toxicity now I have my own mnemonic that I came up with the toxicity of amphotericin B you can come up with your own too uh, but this is mine so I'm sharing mine my mnemonic is Sean S H A A N Sean poked hole which makes sense to me because amphotericin B pokes holes so Sean poked hole and what are each of the letters stand for so S stands for shake and bake the whole the shake and fever and chills so that's that's for s h is going to be for hypotension a is going to be for arrhythmia the next a is going to be for anemia N is going to be for, this is the obvious one, nephrotoxicity. Now, since it causes nephrotoxicity, we do have to supplement with magnesium and potassium because um, the, it, it, there is an electrolyte imbalance with amphotericin B. And P is going to be for flevitis. Okay, so IV flevitis. What about H? There's actually three H's. Okay, the first H is going to be hydration. Hydration will reduce nephrotoxicity. Hydration will reduce nephrotoxicity. The other is going to be for hyperkalemia. And the last is for hypo. Kalemia. Like I mentioned, that amphotericin B does cause um, weird electrolyte imbalance. So it can cause either hyper or hypokalemia. It can, it can cause both. As a, as a result, we do have to give electrolytes to replace it. And we are going to give magnesium and potassium to replace those electrolytes that it's going to give us deficiency of. So that's my interpretation of amphotericin B.